Mm. And when I say take out, I mean like either take them out or take them out. Why do these <coughs> incidents happen? And the big sign at the zoo is do, do not, not feed, feed the, the animals. animals, right? Bruce, yeah, have yeah. you fed any yeah. monkeys lately? Yeah. We're just urbanized and stupid, like, you know? Welcome to SG Now. I'm Shada Harrison. So good to be back at my local Kopi Tiam, drinking my favorite Kopi O Kosong. And the City Joe with me in the studio today is none other than City Joe Bruce. Yo, guys. How are you doing, Bruce? I'm doing great. We have a very special guest in the house today. We have none other than Bernard Harrison. And Bernard Harrison is the man behind the <coughs> Singapore Zoo. And you moved the Singapore Zoo into an open concept. Not only did you do that, you were also the man behind the world's first night safari. Yep. Right? True. Getting animal, getting people to watch animals at night. Yep. Right? Yep, yep. But the most important thing about you is that he's my dad. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I drink to that. <laughs> yeah, I drink to that. Today we're going to obviously be talking all about animals and our relationship to animals. So before we get into the discussion, let's watch a short video called Wild Singapore. Check it out. What would you do if this happened to you? In recent months, clashes between man and animal have been making the rounds on social media. Our then Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew said, look here guys, our Singapore River, Kalang River, was smelling like a sewer. Our forefathers, polluted the environment to the extent that otters disappeared. In 1998, we encountered our very first resident pair of otters. So in terms of like macaques grabbing and snatching, so when that happens, typically what, it, 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 in the heat of the moment, I usually try not to you know, throw food or give the macaques food in that moment because sometimes the macaques might, might come back because they associate the area with food. Mr. Harrison shared that monitor lizards are not aggressive by nature. And as long as we maintain our distance, we'll be just fine. Uh, I think a monitor lizard basically would turn tail and run nine times out of ten. As I say, they're not aggressive and so you know, respect that. But I think the main thing is res just respect just respect wildlife. And, and if you want to take pictures, yeah, take, take pictures, but don't try and get so close. What we need to do is to respect all wildlife, keep our distance. Wildlife coming back to Singapore, I take my hats off to NPARCS for having this initiative called A City in Nature. If you take a good look um, at HDB housing estates and, and, and new developments, the, the amount of greenery that has been incorporated to these developments, um, I, I think is a testament to the government wanting to put as much green back into our country. I'm so glad to have the both of you in the studio. Like Bruce, you went out there and you learned about, you know, the relationship between animals and humans, you know, residents coming into close contact with animals in the wild, right? Yes, yes. And how did you feel about making that video? What did you learn? What I can say is most of them they have that fear in them, you know, they are scared to encounter macaques, wild boars, you know. Um, I know Singapore is, is getting more populated and their natural habitats are, are slowly being um, taken away from them. Yeah. yeah. So as such, you see more and more wild animals coming into HDB areas mm -hmm. and us being away from the kampung <coughs> days already la. Mm. So seeing wild animals around us is like, oh, what's going on, you know? Yeah, so you were saying that the animals seem to have fear, right? But the humans also have fear. Well, both have fear la. I, I think it's more of... Uh, the humans you know, having humans, fear yeah. more than the animals. <laughs> you watched the, the video, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. Yeah? <coughs> what were your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think, the, I think generally the animals are pretty fearless because they don't, uh, they don't suffer anything 
so if, if anything, National Parks is sort of siding with them and uh, it's sort of illegal to capture or, or kill them, you know. So mm -hmm. that's why like the otters, for instance, that have the free range of the whole of Singapore, which is great. I mean, I think it's great as a zoologist, I think it's great. You know, ov obviously some people who have their very expensive koi eaten in their ponds get very upset. I, know, but I spoke to someone from N Parks and um, this is what she said. If you do meet a wild animal, all right, just report it and mm. that's it. Um, I said, <coughs> what if the animals start attacking? Can we do anything? She, what she told me was, um, try to live with it. I mean, I mean, not the exact words, but you know, to that effect. Yeah. It was actually a shock to me to, to hear saying that. Why? Try to live. Yeah. Actually, okay, let's get things into perspective. <coughs> so, in the late 1890s, the Surgeon General of Singapore put down about 300 deaths a year to tiger kills. Yep. Wow, that's in a Singapore. big number. 300 deaths a year to yeah. tiger kills. Now, they probably weren't all deaths. They probably were gangsters, the triads, they were killing each other, and the tiger was just eating the, the dead bodies. But mm -hmm. there were quite a lot of tigers in Singapore. Chu Chu Kang, Chua Chu Kang, Pongo. Living and in the around yeah, us in Kampong. The forest, yeah. And they would just swim across. And I mean, I, mean I, I, I used to speak to the previous Sultan of Johor, several Sultans ago, and he used to say, he used to sit at the polo club in, in Johor, and watch tigers swimming across the Straits of Singapore. Oh my goodness. So we had, we had tigers here until the 1940s, 1950s, I think. What? That we, we year? Samba, yeah. And they were, um, we were living with them. I mean, we were, we were doing what any Malaysian in, 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 in Peninsula or in, in Sabasra, well, no, they don't have tigers in Sabasra, but in Peninsula, I mean, you do encounter tigers and leopards, uh, and so, we just, as she said, the, the national parks, it's like, kind of, you know, you have to live mm. with, you have to live with them because yeah. there are 16 million species of animals on this planet. Yeah. You know? and, but, you know, I mean, that's the question, like, do we as Singaporeans know how to live with them? It seems like <coughs> we did we at did, some point. We did, right? and now And now we don't. So there's a changing relationship that's obviously happen or you know the relationship has obviously changed it went from we could live with them once i guess mm. like living in colorado you go for a walk in the park and oh it's a bear yeah, yeah. and there's protocol on how to deal with that bear and there's a risk right the risk is the bear could kill you yeah. or you know how to handle the bear and walk <coughs> off but there's a risk that either way yeah. it could come out dead or alive um but with urbanization which has happened all over the world mm. right we seem to be <coughs> that relationship with animals is getting you know, the distance is growing. Yeah. But in Singapore, in some cases, we're creating le less of a distance, right? Yeah. You know, um, we'll talk more about that later. But why do you think this relationship with animals has changed to what it is today? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I think it's because we, we, we got rid of a lot of the animals, a lot of the big animals in Singapore <coughs> in, the, in the 10s, 20s, 30s, 1940s. Um, we shot them out, uh, they were, then they started to protect what was left and uh, through, through quite strong protection of, of, of animals, uh, some, some which are very good at living with uh, urbanization have flourished and through that protection they are um, doing very mm. well. Actually, I mean, the unofficial statistic actually for the government is that they've culled at least a thousand monkeys, long-term macaques uh, mm. in Singapore. Don't tell me, I get very and, sad. And I'm, and I'm sure, and I'm sure some of the, bo the boars get culled as well. I mean. And in fact, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem, they will, will create a problem. Mm. In Berlin, the wild boar are creating havoc in, 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 in the city, uh, raiding uh, rubbish dumps, uh, your, your trash, mm. and they get very aggressive, like the monkeys, they do get aggressive. Yeah. So the thing is, we have to live with it, but at the same time, we have, to, we have to manage it and the government authority has to also manage it and they have to take out the um, aggressive ones. Mm -mm. And when I say take out, I mean like either take them out or take them out. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things. Yeah. So I was told for aggressive long-tailed mm -hmm. macaques uh, who got like <coughs> ousted from, from the troop, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what happens is, is if they create mischief and we report it, what they will do is to relocate 
the the monkey. Mm. That's it. Mm. Even so, to me, that's like, huh? Well, it doesn't. It's a very small. Yeah. It's a very small island. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah, but talking about you know, um, well, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? The good is like going back to that bridge, mm-hmm. our eco bridge. Eco bridge, yeah. Right. I really like that bridge because then mm. you know, wild animals from one end of a highway can go over to the other end, and we've been able to see some um, deer, samba deer. Mm. Um, um, boars as well crossing over, yeah. um, which is a lovely thing to have. Mm-hmm. But in the same instance, the same breath, we're talking about the macaques invading people's HDBs. Yeah. That poor boy, his, his uh, bag got taken out by the macaques. He didn't want to. They didn't want to give him back. The monkeys didn't want to give him back his bag. Remember that time we were going for a walk with our dog. We're walking our dog along this ramp mm. in Pongol. And this group of monkeys were just following us for about like 10 minutes mm. because they saw our dog as a threat. But that was a very frightening moment. Mm-hmm. So there's obviously, you know, wildlife kind of seeping into our life, right? Mm. Um, oh, and, and by the way, we, we had b- big trips of macaques in the botanic gardens until, until the, the, the 70s, I think. And then eventually it was decided that you had to cull them. Yeah, so they actually closed it off and then brought in uh, an army unit and they shot, shot them all. Army unit? Mm. Wow, that's your user. An army unit to shoot the monkeys down. It's mm. a bit like Planet of the Apes. Well, it was, a, I mean, sorry, no, it was, in other words, it was a, it was a, 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 a managed thing. It was cordoned off and then they just, just killed them all. But why? Because they were causing a huge problem. Mainly, they were. It was unmanaged. They were. You had hawkers selling peanuts to feed to the monkeys. You come in. You you're carrying your peanuts, and then the monkeys jump up and grab them from you. And people tease them. And people get bitten. And people mm. complain. Yeah. It was a mess. It was so a mess. I was going to ask why. Same, same thing happens in Penang Botanic Gardens. Right? So yeah. So I was going to ask why do these <coughs> incidents happen? And the big sign at the zoo is. Do, do not, not feed, feed the animals, animals, right? Bruce, yeah, have you yeah. fed any yeah. monkeys lately? Well, well, lately? Do you like to feed animals? <laughs> okay. Ah, okay, I like to feed pigeons and okay. I know it's wrong. Steady, yeah, steady. Yeah. I don't anymore. <laughs> okay, steady, yeah. You ask, right? You ask, I will answer. Answer lah? I did. <laughs> when I was young. Past now. tense. Past, I, I do see, see a lot of people in the HTB area feeding the pigeons and all that. You have these oh old ladies who come out with all the thing and they feed everybody. I yeah. Mean, you see them all the time. So is that causing <coughs> this kind of rift or tension that happens between the wild animals and us? Because they expect us to give them food? So you, you have a carrying capacity of, of a forest or, um, for monkeys, say. Uh, and the, the, if the monkeys are not being fed on any supplementary food, then they have to learn how to eke out a, an existence in the in the in the forest, and they can. So, but their carrying capacity is quite low. But as soon as you get supplementary feeding, then the, cap- the capacity of the monkeys becomes much higher, and they come and they actively search for food in, in <coughs> urban areas, and that's when they start. And when they're not finding the food, that's when they start breaking in and. and Stealing bananas and stuff. Right? So it's mm. uh, the it, the otters is a very interesting situation in Singapore. Where now there's I think four four groups or five groups. Yeah. And they I love the otters. I think they're great. Uh, I, but I mean it's 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 obviously a disaster waiting to happen. Why? Yeah, <coughs> because it, the, the otters will eventually attack somebody. I mean they attack. They some, have already yeah, attacked yeah, somebody yeah, like they, bit they leg how many yeah. times? Right? A few times. So I think, I think. so it's like. They have, to, they people have to, people have to be managed, and probably the otters have to be managed to a point as well. Uh, and when I say managed, I don't mean cull, but I mean obviously, I mean I I cycle past a, a bunch of otters in the morning every day, and and uh, they're great. They're they're actually just like within two one meter from from the public, and there's just a kind of little fence there, and that's where they have their den. There's about fifteen or twenty in this particular pongo group. All it's going to take is one stupid little kid going to jump over there one day and go and look in the thing, and the otters will come out and whack him. And, and why not? That's why not? It's their territory, yes, right? Yes, but I mean, then there'll be a big fuss, and if he gets killed, well, it will be a huge problem. Wait. You know? And I always found otters to be the cutest. They were my favorite exhibit at the zoo. Mm. I would just stand there for like, you know, half an hour, just going, 
you know, but they're vicious. Right? No, as in, oh my, this is really... They're a nice community, right? I don't want to say anything to make anybody anti-otters because I love the otters. Mm, so do I. And they're very cute and they're very lovable. But like with any wild animal or domestic animal, they can turn like that. Mm -hmm. But, and the point is that they are wild. And, and every wild animal in Singapore, whether it's monitor lizards or otters or macaques or boars or, or deer, I mean, there are deer as well, I mean, they, they are potentially dangerous. And the point is, in, if you're a Malaysian, mm -hmm. you get it. You don't go around chasing them and trying to stroke them and feed them. It's like, you know, you don't. So why do we not get because this? Because we're, we're just urbanized and stupid. Like, you know? we have, Hello! We have, become, we have become, we have become like that. No, and I agree with him. Yeah, I agree I with do him. as well. Yeah. And we, we, we need to relearn yeah. that to, we have to learn how to live with wildlife right? mm. and not be stupid about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then um, at the moment we are. I mean, I see I see people really trying to take selfies with with uh, monitor lizards and with, with otters every time I cycle past, and it's like. Uh, <sighs> so, so what is the one thing that Singaporeans need to know when encountering a wild animal? They need to know and they need to do. That they're potentially very dangerous. And so to give them a high, high, a lot of respect and a, and a wide berth. I mean, I think that's the main things. And then, and I think it shouldn't be any problem. Wide berth means distance. Yes, distance. Yeah. It's don't very go and English. chase yeah. them. Don't don't go and take picture with them. You know, it's like don't. But I, I see a lot of. I mean, kids especially. That they just chase. They chase them. And parents don't I stop mean, them. Mm. Oh, is it? As and parents will stop them. So obviously, it's not just the child, right? It's and education, so think, right? Yeah. So they and they think, they think that it's safe. Well, as father and daughter, like for a long time, I was quite like, Dad, why do you build a zoo when you put animals in cages? And but the open zoo is not like a caged up <coughs> concept. Well, and my dad always says, ninety nine percent of zoos should be shut down, mm -hmm. because it's either Alcatraz, putting animals in Alcatraz, or the Ritz Carlton, right? So Singapore Zoo is designed to hold all these animals. Club men. Club men. Club men. <laughs> but, you know, um, one of our main argue, like, you know, debates for a long time yeah. was, you know, I'm a bit like anti-zoo. Mm. So let's, let's talk about nature reserves and wildlife. And one of the things that you always said was you are running the zoo and you persistently ran it because of fill in the blanks. So a lot of people can't afford to go on a safari to Africa. Uh, a lot of people, if they go to Taman Negara in, in, in Malaysia, they get very disappointed because you can't see anything. You can't see more than 10 meters in, in, a, in a tropical rainforest. And so you may be able to hear stuff, but you don't see it. So basically, what a zoo does, and the, uh, zoos are not for animals, not for the animals, they're for people. What zoos do is that they actually display animals so that people can see the the biodiversity of, of the world in, in a relatively quick tour. Yeah. And so it helps educationally. It's also a great recreational uh, facility as well. Mm -hmm. But it's really, it's really to educate people about, about wild animals and their conservation, the yeah. need for the conservation and, and endangerment. Mm. And that's what zoos are about. And hopefully you do it in a, in a way that is interesting and has a high respect for the animals and, and with a lot of animal welfare. Yeah. One of the bad things about Singapore Zoo, I guess, is that we've, we, we treat, we, we show the animals to be almost so tame and so nice and, and friendly that people may, may come away sort of having this feeling that actually wild animals are not, are not dangerous. This is a hard, this is a difficult topic for me, right? Because I'm an idealist, right? I want... I want the best relationship between animals and humans. And in a way, I see myself I'm very much so as a human animal, like right? religion aside, I'm a human animal. I might have evolved from, or I am here, you know. Um, but, but the truth is, like, if I had macaques outside my window in the morning, how am I actually going to react to that? Exactly. You're right? You look so, at it realistically. Yeah. Once their habitats are being taken away, taken away from them, they will come into our area. Environment is more welcoming mm. for them to live in our environment than they might also, you know. Well, I think, I think the thing is that 
I think the thing is that, uh, that as, long as, we, as long as we respect them and we, we, we stop uh, feeding them and, 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 and that kind of thing, and we, we actually are proud of them. Like if you go to South Africa, I'll be going to South Africa in, in, a, in a week's time, and you, you talk to South Africans, and they're so proud of their wildlife. They're so, they're so, they love their, their, their national parks, their wildlife, um, but basically they are managed well. And, um, but it's like, if Singaporeans were proud of their wildlife and said, well, we have these otters, you know, we have these macaques, we have these, these boars, um, and the, the government takes a probably a slightly more uh, uh, a stand, a better stand in, in, in managing the groups and, and, you know, and, and making, taking serious decisions about culling and things like that, uh, and keeping the troops so that, so that there's an equilibrium and we don't get into a stage, to a state where potentially uh, people will be harmed by the animals. Uh, because this will then lead to, to huge conflicts, yeah. which happens all over the world. Mm, mm -mm. Mm. Thanks for that. What is your ideal relationship between man <coughs> and animal? Well, I think, I, I think that we, sh we should... Uh, I think Singapore, Singaporeans are, are being quite educated. Um, you know, f 45, 50 years ago, when, when first opened the zoo, our Singaporeans were a, a really uncouth, uh, uneducated bunch of, of people who used to come to the zoo and chuck stones and sticks and, and kill animals, and they were like horrible people. Uh, now, uh, Singaporeans come to the zoo and they tell foreigners not to do that to the animals. So I think the Singaporeans have, have, have matured, and I'm very happy to say that, have matured over the years. I don't think I've ever like really had this conversation with with you at least. This is new with Bruce as well. Like you know, really talking about our current um, situation with animals mm -hmm. and how we're living with them. And of course, education is key and it is totally important and it needs to start there, right? Changing the psyche. We can create the best infrastructure, but if we're not ready to live side by side with respect and like you said a key word just live with them and yours is respect them mm. then <laughs> hope for the better yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> good okay well um here we are it's 2022 and it's a great year to be in because you know we're really reaching out to our to the eco structure in Singapore and allowing for more of a relationship between wild animals and us. I'm really glad we had this conversation today. If you're at home or you're watching this over your laptops or you know mobile devices, please if you really want to add a comment and share, we do read and we want you to comment. So share your thoughts in the description. If you like the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Also, we still have our NFTs up for sale. That's still going on. But until then, we will see you at our next very enriching, soul-growing conversation. So join in. Huh? Don't be shy. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye.